Hello everyone, my name is Paradis Mohammadpur. I am doing my PhD in Material Science and Engineering at McMaster University, Canada. You can see McMaster's engineering building in the background. My PhD project is on a laser powder bed fusion of Inconel 625. Today I am going to present a part of my research which is uh, creating solidification microstructure selection maps for Inconel 625, which is processed by LPBF. Many different metal fabrication methods have been developed over the last two centuries. People have always been seeking costly, efficient and reliable metal products. Therefore, metal product suppliers constantly looking for a new method or technology to meet their customers' demands. One of the newest metal fabrication methods that challenges all the traditional ones is metal additive manufacturing. Laser powder bed fusion is an additive manufacturing technique which makes use of metal powder as a feedstock and laser beam as an energy source to fabricate the net shaped three dimensional parts from a 3D digital model. The parts are built layer by layer through melting and solidification of the metal powders. In solidification point of view, LPBF process is layer by layer melting and rapid solidification. It's kind of similar to traditional multi-layer welding process, however in different length scale. The size of the melt pool in this process is approximately 50 micrometer. Solidification rate and thermal gradient are very large in the melt pool during a laser melting process. A complicated heat transfer condition also available at small length scales. This lead to the diversity in the microstructure. You can see here we can get different solidification microstructures as well as grain morphologies from LPBF process. Now the question is, is it possible to rationalize the LPBF microstructure trends over the different solidification parameters and chemical composition or not? The answer is yes, we can predict LPBF microstructure over a wide range of solidification and processing parameters through creating solidification microstructure selection maps. In this study, we have successfully created these two SMS maps for Inconel 625 multi-component alloy. The first type shows the stable solidification morphology over a range of growth velocity and alloy composition at constant thermal gradient and the second type presents the stability range of equiax or columnar grain morphology for different thermal gradients and solidification rate at constant composition of this alloy. But how we made these SMS maps? Kurtz, Trivedi, Gauman and their colleagues have developed SMS maps for rapid unidirectional solidification over the last three decades. To create these maps, they have proposed some analytical models, including solidification growth models, as well as columnar to equiax transition model. Their analytical models, which are included in the paper, have been used in this study in the context of additive manufacturing to create SMS maps for Inconel 625. To verify the microstructures predicted by the SMS maps, a single track LPBF experiment has been performed utilizing the EOS M2 AT machine at McMaster University. The Inconel 625 powder was processed using a power of 200 watts and scan velocity of 1100 mm per second. Then the sample was prepared for the microscopy at Canadian Center for Electron Microscopy at McMaster University. 
For this, the sample was cut transverse cross-sectionally, then this cross-section of the melt pool characterized by means of optical and scanning electron microscopy. Secondary electron was used to see the solidification microstructure and EBSD to investigate the grain morphology. This is the OM micrograph of the weld pool. By increasing the magnification using SEM, we can see that the microstructure is consisted of cell-like gamma dendrite and interdendritic Ni3NB and labs precipitates. You can see the EBSD image of the weld pool in the right hand side. The boundary of the weld pool is shown with the white dashed line and the black dashed line shows the columnar to equiax transition boundary. Both columnar and equiax grains are observed in the EBSD image. Now I want to compare the SMS map results and the micrographs. First, SMS map type 1 and the secondary electron image. On SMS map based on the alloy composition and the LPBF processing range, it's predicted to have gamma dendrite and gamma banded microstructures. On the micrograph, presence of gamma dendrite confirms the SMS map prediction. However, Ni3NB and Laves precipitates are not seen in the SMS map. Shale solidification results indicate that these precipitates are formed through eutectic reaction. On the other hand, the equilibrium phase diagram shows that they might have been formed during solid state phase transformation. So it's normal to not see them in the solidification maps. However, there is a still a debate on the mechanism of the formation of these precipitates during laser melting. The second comparison is between SMS map type 2 and the EBSD micrograph. On SMS map based on the LPBF processing range, it's predicted to only have columnar dendrite grains. Looking at EBSD image, we can see that columnar solidification is correctly predicted by the SMS map. However, the formation of equiax grains was not anticipated by the analytical solution. Actually, these equiax grains have nucleated ahead of the columnar front due to the drop in the thermal gradient at the end of the melt pool solidification. This map indicates that a CET will occur when the thermal gradient is less than approximately this amount. Thus, it's likely that the thermal gradient near the top of the melt pool is significantly reduced as compared to what is predicted via the Rosenthal equation. To make the story short, we can say that in the SMS map method, the accuracy is sacrificed. However, it provides the great opportunity to assess a wide uh, parameter space and to act as a guide for more detailed numerical simulation. To improve the utility of the SMS maps, there is need for advancement both in accurate estimation of the physical and thermodynamic uh, properties of the material as well as thermal data during laser melting. At the end, I would like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Andre Filion, for all his support and help during doing this research. Natural Science and Engineering Research Council of Canada for the financial support. Additive Manufacturing Group at McMaster University. Canadian Center for Electron Microscopy. Uh, SIM3P Research Group. And McWASP Organizing Committee. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope you all enjoyed my presentation.